Welcome to the Honest Designers Show, your transparent look into life as a modern designer. My name is Tom Ross and I'm the founder at designcuts.com and this week I'm joined by my fellow Brit and expert hand letterer Ian Barnard, American retro design expert Dustin Lee and the ever-talented South African illustrator Lisa Glanz. In this week's episode, we look at bearing your soul and putting your true authentic self into your design work. This is, of course, much easier said than done, but when you start being truly unfiltered in your creative work, it can lead to some pretty amazing stuff happening. Let's get into the show. So this week, we are getting personal and we're talking about bearing your soul. Uh, sounds kind of ominous uh, within your creative work. So before I open this up to the floor, just to um, kind of introduce it, I guess, something all four of us have noticed is that your creative work, your design work, uh, maybe any creative ventures or business ventures or anything you might be trying to build, they always seem to resonate with people more, have more impact and do better and go further when they are truly honest and authentic. So I'm talking no holds barred, just really sharing some of the most private parts of yourself. That, that sounds that wrong. That didn't sound <laughs> <laughs> Lucky as this is radio. I'm not doing that. <laughs> radio podcast. That'd be a fine. Oh, no. <laughs> We're leaving that in. So yeah, <laughs> share, your, share your private parts. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, so yeah, I, I, let's let's discuss this. But first of all, do you guys agree? Is this something that you've seen? Um, I know, Dustin, we've been plugging your new Instagram. Um which is sharing these these uh these personal illustrations and stuff like that. How do you feel about sharing your private parts on the <laughs> internet? <laughs> uh, well, I've always been pretty honest with like the passive income for designers and the retro supply thing. I tend to keep it fairly honest, but this was the first time I just was like really vulnerable where I did something I wasn't good at and then also shared personal opinions on things or personal text and ideas that resonated with me with the images and I was really scared to do it. I didn't think it would, uh, I don't know, like I thought it would be like a bad experience, but it's turned out to be so positive. Like I look forward to it every day. I get more deeper interactions where people respond with like longer comments and I've met some friends through it. And would it be fair to say they care more? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it feels like friends. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I didn't plan this, but like, Ed, the more I'm doing it, the more like I see like a potential, like I have like different ideas. For instance, I started thinking maybe like, cause I've been wanting to blog more, maybe like these little things will turn into blog posts and I'm actually going to start putting a blog post and making that the image for the blog post. And maybe That's that cool. turns into like my own personal site, like still with no like real business idea to it. But mm -hmm. I just noticed all these other things. Like I started trying out Astropad and I started like trying these different tools and you see your own projects and like retro supply products in like a different light and you try them in a different way. And it's just been the most positive thing ever. And nobody has been like, you suck. I hate you. Um, <laughs> I did, but I deleted that comment. <laughs> yeah. Except for Ian, which is a real kick in the um, cojones <laughs> considering he has 190,000 Instagram followers. It hurt, but <laughs> he doesn't like the idea of, uh, you know, you as a little fish in his pond becoming a big fish one day. So he's, <laughs> he's trying to squash you down. It's David versus Goliath. I had right. issue that the fact that you, you were more consistent than I was over the past couple of weeks. Like I've only posted it. I've only posted a few times and you're posting like day after day. Yeah. It's brilliant. I, I've never done that. I always, Me I never neither. do it at weekends and, um yeah i've just got so much on at the moment i'm just really struggling to get everything done so oh it's been, you. it's been horrible and i've been like staying like last night i was up until 2 45 because i was mm -hmm. doing the illustration and the writing for it and then respond i was like i gotta respond to tom i don't know, I need to respond to this person because <laughs> then i knew people were waking up in the uk and i was like yeah you're, you're sticking to it though I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really trying to stick to it. I'm trying so hard. Oh, we need to get the plug in. So for all of those who haven't been listening recently, the Instagram handle is Hey Dustin Lee, and uh, Dustin, I'll be invoicing you later for this uh, <laughs> regular sponsorship. 
How much is a sponsorship? Uh, just, I don't know, pay me in beer. That's fine. Okay, deal. Um, so yeah, I, I do think this kind of transcends design because um, design, I do think, is art in many senses, especially the way uh, a lot of you guys do it and a lot of the listeners do it. But I think it, this is almost deep. This is more like art than design. It's so applicable for designers, but I I think of the stereotype of an artist, the kind of tortured artistic soul. And I think the best, most prolific artists do exactly this. You know, they will share some of their most you know, painful experiences, some of the darkest sides of themselves. And, and it doesn't have to be all bad. You know, it could be um, also very good sides. Mm. But I just think that like unbridled honesty and just shedding any pretense and not imitating anyone else in your work and just being truly you this is like a more profound version of de developing your own style which we talked about in episode one yeah beyond just like oh well this kind of looks like my style and no one else is you know that's fantastic but I think this is like the next level where you've got your style and it's like how am I really gonna put myself into this in every piece I do um so I, I don't know Lisa what do you think about this yeah, I think um, as as I've grown as an artist and illustrator and, and, you know, been working on my own style and getting better at what I do, I have tried to um, interact with people more on a personal level. But I must be honest, I still find it very scary. Um, when, like Dustin, when I read your posts that you have on Instagram – I don't know. I'm like, in a way, I'm kind of jealous because I wish I was that, f like, f I felt that free to be able to just, you know, put myself out there, you know, so vulnerably. But I mean, it's amazing. I think it's, it's I think it's so cool. I guess I'm just, I guess I'm like everybody else. I'm just scared. So w what I find myself doing, I kind of go halfway. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I kind of like show a little bit of myself, but then not entirely myself. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Could you give like a preview of something you feel like, sorry to put you on the spot, but like, so what's something that you wouldn't put that like you wish you could? Well, okay. In terms of my work, my work is pretty much like the actual visual work. That That is me. I mean, that, you know, I don't really hold back. Um, what what Perhaps what I haven't shown is like my fine artwork that I've never really shown because I don't know. I just didn't think people would be interested in that. So I would. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so there's that, and then there's also from it's more the written stuff. Like I, I guess I edit myself. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really, I don't know, I don't really give my full opinions. I guess I don't know. Um, because you're scared or what? Yeah, because I, I am quite an outspoken person, and I have very strong opinions about certain things. And I know in my my social life because of who I am and, and because of my outspoken ways that I, I guess I can rub people up the wrong way. So I try and... Really? You would never think it? Oh, oh yes, because I, I'm very... Um, yeah, as I said, I like I have strong opinions about things that, that mean a lot to me, like animal abuse or, you know, child abuse or, you know, the way people behave in a certain way and the way they mm -hmm. treat the planet, the way... You know, so I, I have on a day-to-day... Interactions with people, you know, I'm not scared to tell somebody, "Hey, buddy, you just dropped your cigarette." You know, that's littering. Pick <laughs> it up. You know, <laughs> and I think people, yeah, they 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 shy away from controversy like that. So, so I'm not as outspoken like that on on my social kind of platforms, but not not that mm -hmm. it really needs that. But no, yeah. but but I do uh, even in um, your case, you're doing these cute, wonderful, whimsical illustrations, yeah. and I can see that <laughs> it would be totally... weird to be aggro. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I don't know because you could channel it, so um, you could create a, a little girl character who was kind of like getting a bit frustrated, but in a quirky, cute way about the stuff around her. You know, yeah. you could make that fit within your creative world. Or mm. if you were having a bad True. day or feeling stressed, you could channel that into a character who. I don't know, maybe he had like a, a, a metaphorical cloud raining mm. down uh, on his head because he was feeling a bit uh, stressed or anxious or whatever yeah. it might be. So, and, and and I think the communication not only goes into the work then, but it goes into how 
you contextualize it. Mm. So if you put it out and did the product description or Instagram description or whatever and said, here's how I've been feeling lately, I've channeled this into this character, which is now available as part of this product. Yeah. People just seem to jump all over that because it's like, oh, this isn't just another cute thing, mm. which they love anyway. But it's like, oh, it's, it's telling a story and it's an extension of you. And they don't just love your work. They love you. Mm. I, I guess I've, I've just been scared because I know I'm an oddball. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I love that. And, and I feel like you've even your website redesign. Right, that's another way to show your authentic self. That yes. feels so I much felt... more you than your old yes. one, and yes, it's yes, very yes. much like "Welcome to my weird and wonderful world." Yeah. That's the vibe I get, but it's like that's the place I want to be in because it, <laughs> it's not yeah. like this generic um, website template no, or whatever. Sure. It, this is, you know, it feels like an extension of you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's. I have to think of it as in um, depth over breadth. Breadth is that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's so. all about going deeper rather than expanding you know yes. pushing yourself out there just generically because mm. the more people know about you the more they build up trust and the more likely they're gonna you know whether that's gonna buy your services or refer you whatever that may be is like the thing is with dustin he's made some friends already because he's been really honest and it it doesn't take long for someone to get to know someone through their story or like yeah, in Dustin's true. case, mini stories. And the reason why I, I follow loads of people on like specifically YouTube, not for the fact that they're doing um, the subject they're teaching or the subject they're talking about. I'm following stuff that I'm like, like I like photography. I'm not particularly good at it, but I'm following lots of photographers because of the personality that's driving their channel. And that comes through. Uh, like one guy just sort of every time he does a, a video he, he sort of tells a story about his personal journey whether that might be like being talking about uh, being an introvert talking about um, like you know always hating your work stuff like that and it's just you love to you know the, the visuals are beautiful but it's just learning that story mm. about them and you just you, you just get to know them really well mm. and you get that through you know you talking about yeah, and it could be you know if you the things you were just talking about then, if you could try and say that this is how I feel about certain things, and so you know just talking about what you were talking about there is something yeah. you could put out there because mm. people go, oh yeah, I resonate. That's why I don't. Um, I I'm not my honest self because I'm worried about what other people will th- will take from my opinions and stuff like that. That's what Dustin Dustin's not really saying his opinions. He's saying what he feels, which you know. You can say, you know, this is how I feel, mm. uh, and and then that's less going to be offensive about people because that's just saying, you know, just how you feel inside. Yeah. You know, you don't have right. to. I do you not feel like we're socially conditioned though to hold back. Oh um, yes, all the time. I, like literally, if I just emptied my brain unfiltered into my social media feeds, it would be the most terrifying thing. Because <laughs> um, even when I am putting some of my more honest thoughts out there. I don't document my every feeling. It's not like I literally pick up the phone and stare at it and go, oh, I'm having like the most stressful day or like something like that. It's um, it's still edited. Yeah, it's edited yeah. to a degree, but the less mm. you edit, the more profound an impact it seems to have, whether that's spoken or video or design. Yet the funny part is the, the most um, popular designers on social media are the ones that come to my mind tend to be very unedited. Uh, the top of mind is Vaughn Glitchka, you know, very prominent vector artist. And I mean, a, a quick story. So for instance, like this is just one snippet of what he does constantly. He's on LinkedIn, right? And someone had posted some logo design farm that like releases tons of logos. They had said, which one do you like best, A, B, C, or D? And then his comment was the top comment. And he said, um, E, the one you haven't made yet. He's like all the all these basically suck. Like keep going, and <laughs> and it got like the more and it got more upvotes than their actual post did. And no one, I mean, people love him for it. Um, so I, I think a lot of times that helps. And in my case, and I, I think a lot of cases, I'm not the most talented illustrator for sure. Just a little plug here. Go look at my thing if you want to see that I'm not the most talented <laughs> illustrator. Um, <laughs> But the thing is, there's a lot of illustrators that look very similar. So if you're looking for a way to stand out, in, inject your personality. No one can replicate that. Like, yeah, 
you might have badges like somebody else. Other people might do similar things. And if they're not yet, somebody might come in and start doing similar things to what you're doing, but no one is going to have that personality. So if you can build that deeply into your work, I feel like that adds a context that makes it unreplicable. Yeah. A hundred percent. And we're we're kind of dancing around a few benefits here. Um, But as you say, it differentiates you is a huge one. I think it attracts fans and followers and an audience to your work. I think it actually attracts clients, even if that's particularly scary because you think you should be being super professional. There's just, there's benefit after benefit in my mind um, of doing it. Um, and uh, as we're saying, it, it's just, it's very scary. I think we talked about before developing your style. Um, and I think our biggest tip there was just practice and keep at it. Um, but I actually think this is a real shortcut to finding your style as well. Oh, definitely. If, if you have this in mind from day one. Mm. Um, but it's almost like you have to mentally train yourself oh, for to... Sure. <laughs> to be this candid and, and open mm. I actually I listened to a podcast on entrepreneurship which is slightly different obviously to design but I do see a lot of parallels and the guy is a young CEO called Stephen Bartlett he's based in, in the UK and it's a really really good podcast but it's one of the most honest bits of content I've ever heard so he he really just shares it all, like how the business impacts his mental health. He's talking about how it impacts his private relationships, but like sharing mm. this with the world. And he'll literally be on it and be like, I am missing my ex-girlfriend. And I know she is listening to this and this is getting me in trouble, but I do miss her. And part of that is because uh, she really understood me and my work. Um, and then he'll be talking about going to the gym and he's like, let's be honest, I'm a young guy. I'm doing it because I want to look more attractive to attract girls. Like, I'm not going to lie and say it's about health. And and this is like <laughs> a really successful entrepreneur who could be super worried about offending his hundreds of employees or his company's image. But he is literally like emptying his brain. And this podcast has just taken off on the back of it like nothing I've oh, ever seen. Yeah. And it really, it's one of the things recently which has got me thinking. So that got me thinking about um, being so open. Dustin, your feed got me thinking about this. And I'm just seeing it more and more and more and starting to identify this pattern um, that I didn't really notice before where all the top people I follow and the stuff that I see start doing well, and even in the stuff I put out that does particularly well, it all adheres to this pattern of just mm. being totally authentic. I think people are tired of social media being so surface level mm-hmm. um i think i think now now that it's really you know so prolific and it's part of our lives people are desperate for something more deeper and more interactive and more human um so it makes perfect sense that that would be becoming more and more the trend it's just for me i guess i'm just not used to doing you know over a telephone or like a, a cell phone you know mm-hmm. text texting my innermost feelings it's just weird but yeah i, I guess i gotta I've, got, I've just gotta get used to it it's actually really therapeutic i don't mm. know if you you can um confirm that dustin it is i actually i'd love to share a quote i i literally just put this up there today i think this quote really matches like beautifully um so it's by marcus aurelius i think that's how you say his name is that old he wrote the meditations which is this old philosophical book anyways he says he's given an example of imperfection, how it can be beautiful at like sharing your imperfections. Mm -hmm. So he says, take the baking of bread. The loaf splits open here and there. And those very cracks in one way, a failure of the baker's profession somehow catch the eye and give particular stimulus to our appetite. Mm. I always think about that. And I think it's so true. Like Mm. it makes it more beautiful when you see people's like little cracks. cracks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> We're going back to exposing it all. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> expose yourself, share your private parts, and think think about your cracks. <laughs> so, so immature. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's been a recent trend of um, fitness people sharing like real, true um, photos of themselves that haven't been photoshopped, which has been real eye opener for people. Where you know, well, that's cool. For like women showing like cellulite and the fact that you know this is what it actually looks like, mm-hmm. and and you know for them it's been you know they obviously they they might get more followers, but the fact that the the follower who people follow go deeper because of that level of 
trust and honesty yeah you know is is beyond the surface so you know you you have your work that brings people in and then you have the emotional side which keeps them there um you know there's an extent to just seeing good work after good work mm-hmm. you know you need to we crave as you know emotional human beings more than just you know what looks good we we also want to go deeper you know and that's why relationships we have to spend time with people we have to chat to people we have to find out about people mm-hmm. and the same with you know the whole way that 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 we work at the moment you know social is still based upon relationships and based upon you know deep relationships as well and that's why you you get people who who follow these people like on youtube and instagram so wholeheartedly is because they they the person has told a story and they're a good storyteller which is a really good it, storytelling is a amazing business thing i'm not very good yeah. at telling stories i wish i was better <laughs> i i wouldn't say that and i i do think you can tell stories in your work it doesn't need to be verbally. Uh, you can tell it in your design work. So to be honest, I'm getting more and more examples pop in my head of um, authenticity and across pretty much every sector. There's, um, there's a, for example, there's a model who my girlfriend follows who um, did a video showing all the specific poses that models do to look the best on camera. Um, and so she was like, here's how I look normally, kind of similar to what you're saying, Ian. It's like, here's how I look when I, you know, tilt my hip at this angle and it's just you know it's like industry secrets kind of thing um and as i say, I, I can just think of so many examples right across the board but taking this back to design and creativity what are some actionable ways the listeners can put this into their work should we have a little uh, little quick fire round on this maybe yeah so i i i'll start um do a piece design a piece around something that scares you and then share that with the world oh that's a good one damn absolutely (laughs) and see what happens literally i really i'm sure some listeners will do this and tag us up because i want to see i i guarantee you'll probably see a uh, spike in engagement and response share i I would say uh, very similar share your share your weaknesses and flaws and it should make you feel like it might undermine your career or in a small way or undermine your reputation in a small way. So a perfect example, I did a illustration of a hand the other day. It was a pretty rubbish hand. And I, didn't think I, so. I literally wrote on it, drawing hand sucks. And it, you know, I think a lot of people felt that way. I was like, I suspect a lot of people hate drawing hands and oh, feel yes. they always put them behind their backs or in their pockets. So when I put that, I was like, <laughs> I don't like admitting that. I'm horrible at something, but I think a lot of other people are like, thank you. Yes. So think if it doesn't feel like it stings a little bit to share with people, you're not probably being vulnerable enough. Mm -hmm. And it only takes one time to learn that it does that you get rewarded for it. You very seldom do someone beat someone with a stick when they share a vulnerability. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You idiot. How dare you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Lisa, Ian, who's up? Lisa, go on. It would be cool to, to draw something or design something that makes you angry, whether it's something personal Ooh. or about the world, about your neighbor, about, I don't know, your friend, your mom, whatever. One um, of us. <laughs> 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 no, there'd be just too many to post. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> After okay. the weeks of abuse, it all comes out. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think that's... That's a really good one. Yeah, I think that that'll... Um, expose not only your vulnerability but also what you feel strongly about Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice ian so something that i definitely recognize from especially musicians uh, especially really successful ones are that they take their pain and take their talent and put it together Mm. that's what creates a successful for them a song you know a piece and that's so it's looking inside yourself and finding what 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 emotional things really have really hurt you maybe something at school taking that emotional feeling and getting so for me what you're telling it is for for say lettering and putting those two things together will create something specially focused on on you and who you are yeah yeah 
<laughs> and mm. sometimes and that, and that might take a while to work out, but it's just looking, I think, looking at the things that, yeah, that are really sort of deep within you mm. because they can just really create something. It just using, you know, you see some of the people that have been the most hurt produce some of the most beautiful work. Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone, you know, people that have been hurt, you know, whether it's been like at school being bullied whether that's been, you know, called names, whether it's been uh, let down, you know, there's something of on different levels that you can use and combine with the thing that you are talented at or you are passionate about and put those together and come up with something really, a really good mix. So have a absolutely have a have an emotional channel it, yeah, an emotional time just sort of thinking, <laughs> so uh, thinking about like what it. what pains you. I think it would be easy. To listen to this and think well, i can't use any of this that's in client work because that doesn't fit with how you do client work it, this would just be for personal projects right but mm-hmm. i think this is a really strong exercise to do on your own that will show your clients that you can communicate deeper meanings for instance i immediately think of uh you know periodical uh illustrations or i think that's the wrong word for it um publicate like illustrations and publications where you're trying to expand upon the article in a unique insight Mm -hmm. and they need you to share those vulnerabilities. They need you to share things that people will look at that picture and say, Oh, that's me. That's that weird thing that about me that I didn't want to tell anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a great exercise I think for learning to find unique angles. And the other cool thing is that when you're more vulnerable, we've all talked about how scary it is. When you do that, that's a strategic advantage. It's hard Mm -hmm. to be vulnerable. When you can do that, You've got a huge advantage over your competitors who can't do it because they're not comfortable enough. Yeah, that's so true. I, yeah, hundred um, percent. I'm I'm going to push back a little bit um, because I do see your point that it's more for personal projects and not so much client stuff. But I do think it impacts client work as well in several ways. So um, kind of like what you're saying, I think if, if you're getting in editorial stuff, maybe you're being interviewed about your work, interviewed about yourself, your agency, whatever it might be. If you're being truly authentic there, and a lot of the exercises we're talking about and sharing on social will train you to become more authentic, you're essentially presenting yourself as a brand, Mm -hmm. Um, whether you're a freelancer, part of an agency, you run an agency, whatever. When that starts coming through in articles, in editorial, that will attract people to you naturally who are a good fit. I think the same thing goes for your portfolio because it will help you be less generic. So when you really are getting comfortable with sharing your authentic self, you can put that personality into your portfolio. So instead of it looking very formulaic and perhaps a bit cold or generic or templatey or whatever it might be, you're really injecting your personality there. So people and clients will be equally attracted to that as they will the work that resides within it. And then I think the same thing can even be said to the work. So I know you're going to be constrained by professionalism. You can't go completely nuts. You're not going to be sharing like your depressive mood swings within a corporate client work. But I actually think when you get into the habit of being so authentic, it will train your mind away from just copying the latest hot trend Mm. or copying another designer's work or even just becoming formulaic yourself. Um, I think when you're kind of learning to train your mind and channel your feelings into the work, even if it ends up being something that's glossy or corporate or whatever, I still believe it will be more original because yeah. of the authenticity you're starting to channel. It could almost be like an exercise where you could be like, anytime you're doing a piece, ask yourself, what would this look like if I was being vulnerable? Yeah. Yeah. I Like, even if it's not over, it will come through subconsciously, I think. Yeah, exactly. Because what I was going to say, I, I actually have an example of when, when I was doing um, a lot of corporate work. Um, I mean, it can, corporate work can be quite, bo- well, essentially quite boring, um, like annual report design or, yeah. Um, there, and there, I can actually think of two jobs where I decided to use the things that that meant something to me in the design that were really successful and um, in both cases it, it was nature I mean because I you know I feel quite strongly about that and the the end result was so phenomenal from the client's point of view they loved it you know um, 
and it really worked out. It also helps you to expand on your creativity, like taking a really boring project and turning it into something special. Which makes it more interesting for you. Yeah, exactly. Let alone the client. Yeah. Um, I mean, this this particular job was, it sounds strange, actually, if I have to verbalize what the job was about. Um, they were moving offices. So they, were, so they wanted me to put together a really um, swanky sort of brochure to their clients and their employees about you know, why they're moving offices to a new premises, they, there's whole, you know, changes in the company, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, instead of just, you know, going through the motions of producing this boring corporate brochure, I turned it into kind of like a seed um, growing, you know, plants and eventually becoming a tree. I mean, it, it was all um, about my attachment that I have to nature. And I drew on that including drawing the pictures <laughs> um but but <laughs> it ended up being yeah <laughs> she's here all week folks she's here all week <laughs> i love um, that though yeah and that's, it ended up being such a great really example. successful so yeah because yeah, that could have been so boring it and and so potentially was and, yeah. boring but yeah no so you can you can you can inject your yourself in there yeah that's very cool. I, I know we've talked about them a few times. And we're kind of uh, fan fanboying and fangirling here. Um, but when you think of Aaron Draplin, who's quite a, a big personality in the design industry, do you look at him and think, there's a man who's holding back and is afraid to share his authentic <laughs> self? <laughs> like, not so much. Nope. He, he's like this giant like trucker-looking dude. Mm. Um, and he's full of personality and... Mm-hmm that like as well as his amazing work that totally makes people gravitate towards him from clients oh, to so conferences true. absolutely i can tell you one thing that really connected me to him that was personal that he did is um i uh, met him briefly at creative south a couple a uh, year or two ago and i had looked at his site before i went and then looked at his book and he tribute he makes a big tribute to his father who passed away there's pictures of his father throughout it he has a whole i mean go to his site you look on his site, there's literally just an area. It's just photographs of his dad. It's not even artwork a lot of times. I mean, there is artwork of his father, but there's just mm-hmm. pictures of his dad, stories about his dad. Nothing to do with design, but it. you can tell when he did it, it's kind of like you were talking about with Lisa, where he just created his own world. He's like, here's all the things I think are neat. And they're all compiled in one place, and they happen to be through the lens of a designer. And it is so uh, endearing when someone does that. Yeah. Because I lost my father um, just a couple of years ago. And so when I saw it, I was like, everyone loses their parents at some point. But I felt like, you know, like me and you, I felt like a little string we have connecting something. us. And, yeah. and do you mind if I share, Dustin? You obviously did your post about that. And, yeah. And um, like that really got me going emotionally. Mm. Like it, it was, it was, um, yeah, it was just so honest and uh, touching and personal to mm. you clearly and and outside of like the amazing sentiment i think it produced like a really personal amazing piece of art oh yeah yeah totally i mean um it was therapeutic to do and uh, i like the feeling of i think most people if you try it like i like the feeling of expressing sharing personal things with people i think because other people are and it feels good when other people tell you oh i felt that way too like a couple That's people true. commented and said i lost a parent and yeah. it feels good to me, like just like literally mm. it kind of is therapeutic to me to hear someone say, yeah, that sucks. I know what you're talking about. And yeah, I think it is so much more therapeutic to get those deep connections with other human beings as opposed to what we've talked about before, where it's like, hey, check out my portfolio. <laughs> <Thumbs up emoji. laughs> right. You know, like you, you start building real relationships around your, your passion and your creativity. Yeah. Uh, right. Imagine if someone had done that on that post, that would be really. Like, <laughs> oh, you, you, yeah, you poured your heart out and you said, hey, like for like. <laughs> yeah. Please check out my Behance portfolio. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all the time. This is off well, subject. Yeah. I noticed even on yours, yeah. I was looking at yours, Ian. I was like, people do this on Ian's all the time, too. I was like, anyways, the, the thing is, no so, need to get into it, I guess. My, but a lot, of the, a lot of them, it's just like, sorry, this is quite a side note, but. Um, this is just so funny that happened the other day, but a lot of them are like, oh, I'm a university student, check out my work, you know, which is fair enough, you know, they've just started and they really wanted people to have a look at their work. Then I got someone the other day who said, I'm, thir- you know, check out my work, I'm 38. 
And it's like, <laughs> it, it just seems so random, you know? <laughs> It was oh, like, goodness. What, what does that make a difference about what your work's like? <laughs> but I still don't understand what, what goes through your mind to do that. I mean, I don't know. I just think it's, it's spamming somebody else's feed. Oh, no, it's, it's just bizarre. No. Why would you want to it's, do that? It's like someone popping into this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> just go check out my podcast. Yeah, buddy, this is not your show. <laughs> yeah. I love that we triggered uh, a few people doing that, though, after we joked about it on the show. A few <laughs> of the fans of the show started yeah. doing it as a joke, uh, like very tongue-in-cheek. I complained about it on Facebook, and then people started doing it all over the Facebook complaint. Yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> it's cool. What's quite nice is that there's like a, obviously a week, maybe sometimes two, when we do the show and then it goes out and you forget about it and then yeah, all no. of a sudden you've got all these <laughs> these comments coming out You're like what what was going on yeah. oh yeah no i had that i was like what the oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. um I, I, okay i'll give i'll give you a very real um life example of how this is going to help me i am currently very overdue but i feel like i need my own personal site um Sorry, now I that i'm so- Giggled at that. What? <laughs> oh, when you, oh, you, I just immediately thought you were pregnant. <laughs> Me too. Well, well, you you heard it here first, folks. Um. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe that's just because because I'm a parent and I you know you 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 hear that a lot. You're, <laughs> yeah, you're intuitive. Yes, like that. you do. That's how it leads into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, it's a food baby. Unfortunately, so it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's growing nicely. Isn't a food baby a poop baby? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> got to be authentic here. Got to keep it. <laughs> yeah, got to be authentic. Real. We're not cutting anything out. Um, yeah, so currently I'm trying to work on a personal site for myself because um, I'm thinking, well, I'm involved at Design Cuts, obviously, but also this podcast and I've got my social channels and I just want to have a, a bit of a hub where I can kind of link out to all of these and also, it's almost it's like the modern day business card, right? Yeah, it's a bit more respectable. Sorry, could, could I just say another? I thought you said, uh, "Could I have?" I was trying to set up. A, I want a hug, and I was like, "Oh, he's getting really emotional now." He would. Yeah, hug. well, I'm overdue, so I need a hug. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, sorry, but yeah, I, I, I've been banging my head against the wall, and we've talked about creative block um, a few times on the show, and I've been feeling it with the site even before I get started. I'm kind of fleshing it out in my mind and thinking, "What am I going to do here?" Am I going to go super clean? Like how, how do I put my personality into it? And I think designing your own site, whether it's this kind of profile site um, or a portfolio is the absolute hardest beyond any client work. And I've always found that it's like, um, you know, what shade of blue represents (laughs) me? Um, It's it's just, it's terrible. And you just go round and round in circles. It just goes nowhere. You you do. And especially now, I I don't just want to throw up a generic site. I'm thinking more and more, if this is my site and it's about me and what I'm working on, I want it to be the most creative expression of my authentic self. So I've actually been scribbling notes here as we're going. And before I was just going to have like this professional looking mugshot on, you know, photo on, on the page, but I might do a little timeline and be like, so here I was as a baby, like, kind of cute then it all went downhill and then I developed into this really gangly skinny teenager that was the awkward phase like here I am now <laughs> and kind of weave these photos together and and just kind of like tell a tell a little story and you know sir, similar to what you said about um Aaron's site where you have like photos and polaroids and That's bits cool. of your life it's like why not weave all of that in I guarantee that will get my design juices flowing and mm. let me create something not only authentic but more interesting visually and until I've started thinking about all this, I, I've just been, as I say, banging my head on the table being like, mm-hmm. what is this going to look like? So I think for everyone listening to this episode, hopefully there's some actionable takeaways. But I I just think it, don't do it once. Like start putting it into your regular design work, into your mm-hmm. regular social posting, into your regular mindset about stuff. And then I'm sure, um, you know, that's going to lead to more interesting work creatively. Well, can I just say like, Think about, I, I think as a parent, you start to think about this more, but this applies to everyone. Think about when you're dead. Um, <laughs> well, that's cheerful. No, so no, I, 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 I hear that. what you're saying, Dustin. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's part of life, you know, we, yeah. we die, yeah. it's fine. Um, but, you know, if you think about it, some of the, you are putting so much stuff onto the web where you're showing pictures you drew and these things, and these might be the documentation of your life when you're gone 
that are able to be, you know, salvaged and found and to learn about you. So like, I think for instance, like when I'm putting these things out, I think this might be the easiest thing to find of me in a hundred years or for my, or for my daughters when I'm gone. So I think, do you think Aaron Draplin, um, you know, I, I hope he lives to be a thousand years old, but do you think when he's gone, like this will be a good record of his life? I think it will be. It's like a beautiful record. He talks about his parents. He shares very passionately the things he cares about politically and in so many ways. And yeah, it's a beautiful design portfolio, but it's also a beautiful record of like who he is as a person and what he cares mm -hmm. about. So I guess I like, keep in mind, like, do you want the only thing people can find of you to be badges? Or, yeah or whatever right like <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i at least think about that a lot in in things i do it makes you and your work more compelling it does and yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is your this is your life you know you're not just a designer like no, unless you have not. the time to spend a lot of time like writing your 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 autobiography like share yourself so there's pieces of yourself you don't know what's going to happen yeah and and also it means that it's just not going to be just some generic thing that's up there like Ugh. you know it's going to be something that's authentically you and it's going to be what makes you you mm -hmm. nice well yeah uh, that was kind of fun to talk about to be honest is mm. it's a little bit different i think maybe it's not something that creatives discuss a lot i haven't seen it discussed on any design podcasts or anything like that but um i think it's very of the moment i mean this stuff has always resonated it's always worked but i think lisa was right when she said it's almost starting to become a trend so mm. you know i i do think jump on that early before everyone's learned how effective this stuff is and everyone's doing it mm -hmm. so yeah ho hope it helped all of you dear listeners at home and um yeah we'll see you next time bye from us see ya bye Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. We hope that it got you thinking about how to put your authentic self into your regular design work. It can be scary at first, but once you're over that initial hurdle, it's incredibly rewarding. As always, you can find full show notes over at honestdesigners.com or find us over on iTunes by searching for The Honest Designers Show. If today's episode helped you, then it would mean the world to us if you took just a moment to leave us a quick review over on iTunes. This really is the best way for your fellow designers to discover the show. And of course, it means a lot to myself and my three co-hosts. Thanks again for tuning in and we will see you next week right here on The Honest Designers Show.